Welcome back to Alone Redux 6 Illumination, Mine Level 2, LH247 ET. I don't know what that means. Mine Level minus 2, I guess that would be the right way to go, but like, there are no arrows on these, so I don't know which. Oh well, let's start here, I guess. There's a light. So, um, what episode number are we on now? Five? Um, I'm gonna talk a bit about the ga this game's history, because uh, I think I'm one of the few people who bothered, like, actually researching this game, um, a bit. Because it has a weird little history. Um, originally titled Alone in the Dark Online, it was developed by Pure FPS. Um, I mentioned that Pure FPS made a another shitty, um, Shooter, uh, as a different developer on another episode. I, I remember which one it was. It was Recoil. Um, Recoil was a terrible military shooter from a couple of years ago that was infamous among several reviewers. And um, yeah, the people who developed that formed Pure FPS, and uh, we got this. Lucky us. I have no idea where we are. Anyway, so Alone in York Online. Uh, was the original name, and we know this because, uh, let's see, what was the reason? I think the original reason was the original YouTube account. They, they have two YouTube accounts, uh, one that they actually use, and uh, one that they were going to use and link to, but then you know, didn't use for some reason, for Alone in the Dark. Uh, but the original one referred to it as Alone in the Dark Online by accident. Um, and it was also clearly made long before the game's reveal. Um, and of course the name fits the idea of the game, it's an online co-op game after all. Um, but um, then the game was set to be revealed in April of 2015. Uh, 2014. And uh, it never was revealed in April 2014. It was revealed in August 2014. Uh, why was it revealed in April? Well, we don't know for certain. Chances are they were going to reveal it and show it off at E3, you know, like most companies would do. But for some reason they didn't. But they did write all of the announcement posts and news posts for the website. So that when the reveal did come up in, April, in August, all the posts and stuff about the game says April. I know, right? That's uh, pretty amazing. Uh, but it's true. Uh, you can actually go check it. I think it's still I think it's still marked as those dates because Atari doesn't care. They, they don't even patch out typos. Um, anyway, so it was going to be revealed in, in April. It wasn't. I'm going to assume that what happened was they saw the quality of the game and was like, we can't show this at E3. Um, just like you know, they kept pretending the game was going to release when it obviously wasn't. I mean, do you just need to fall down here or? Really? That's what I need to do? That's ridiculous. Um, so then the game was announced in August and showed um, with, with, with a teaser trailer just showing a portion of this level and a flash looking around before they were killed by a giant demon which we have not seen one, I might add. Um, even though it was heavily featured in the game's promotional artwork. It was announced as a four-player co-op shooter. Um, I technically leaked the announcement, the release period, uh, <laughs> because they left it in the HTML code, and uh, I found it and I put it everywhere. And uh, suddenly, Alone Dog Six was happening, and I was happy because, like I said, I'm a fan of the game, uh, a game series, and I found the game series. Um, But then, they had the showing at PAX, and I will be fully honest, I was actually kind of positive when I heard the first things from PAX. I think it was PAX at least. It was some show d during um, like early September. I think that's PAX. Because um, like the early word about it, like from from a conceptual standpoint, sounded pretty cool. Like I mentioned in the, in the few years ago, I liked the idea of like... Uh, the game randomizing what doors are locked and which ones aren't 
for a new fresh experience stuff. And like, I like Left 4 Dead. I like Alan Wake. Mixing those two games together, that's cool by me. Um, of course, word sh sure enough soon came out from people who did try the game that it didn't play well. Uh, there, was going to, there was going to be a beta. Beta kept getting postponed and postponed and postponed. There was supposedly a close beta going on, but no word ever came out from it. Like, either before or after. So either the the NDA is still going on, or I don't even know if it happened. Uh, when the open beta finally started, it was basically just everyone realizing, Oh my god, we this is a big turd. And the game became a joke immediately. And... Uh, Atari didn't even give us a release date, they just shat it out one day, out of nowhere, and was like, yeah, okay, here you are, here's the game. Actually, maybe they announced the release like a day or two before, I don't remember. I just know I kept, every day I sat on Steam, checking the page, basically, just looking, waiting for a release date, ever since it was originally fall 2014. And then one day it was just like, oh yeah, we're releasing it now. It's a sad story of a game... Where nothing went right. Am I really meant to just jump down here as, as well? This doesn't look very safe. Is there even ground there? I guess there is. There's water too. Ah, fuck it. I guess we'll try. What can go wrong? Objective complete. Brilliant game design. Ah, oh, this game is the worst. Wait, find a battery to call the other. Oh my fucking god! Need to get another battery for another elevator. I am so fucking tired of this. This level has somehow made the game like ten times worse than the previous level, and that's saying a fucking lot. There aren't even any enemies here. At least not, f not so far. Why is this even a challenge? Why? <sighs> there, I have a battery. There, the draw distance is shit. And yeah, I have it on lowest draw distance. But you know what? I'm not gonna try and buff up the settings right now. Even on lowest draw distance, that should look better. Okay, now what? Ride the elevator to the bottom. Okay, why am I doing this again? Oh yeah, because I don't need salvation from angels or something. I don't fucking remember. The story in this game is so far non-existent. It's meant to be about like a ghost town a la... It, 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 it can meant to be like an Innsmouth... Oh my god, that sound. An Innsmouth kind of thing, but... I mean... I don't know. The team were so proud of like, oh, we're inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, just, just like the original game was, and I'm like, I, I'm not seeing it. I mean, I'm a fan of the racist bastard's work, but... I can't see... <sighs> Find three explosives to clear the rubble. I wonder if we can only carry one at a time. Where are the enemies? I mean, to be fair, I'm kind of happy I don't have to fight, because I fight it like the combat system in this game is somehow worse than the fetch quests, but I want the XP for, you know, higher HP and stuff. Which I think I've come to, I come to realize like, the only thing I really need to upgrade is like stamina and HP. The rest is pretty much, pretty much fine. <sighs> okay. There's still no enemies. Like, they, they just disappeared after I jumped down the shaft once and... Actually, before that, as soon as I re as, as I uh, finished the battery quest, they were just gone. I mean, granted, yeah, they, they're just no elevator for them to take, but I figured they could just teleport here. They do otherwise. Maybe, maybe that was no, no. I thought I saw an enemy in the distance, but that was just the red light from the buttons. Seriously. So I really did got in touch with Long in the Dark when I was very young, like, I don't know, maybe four years old or something, four or five. Um, I played the original game and the first sequel, 
I don't know if I played the third game or not. Um, on our old computer, growing up, and um, now the third game can't. I don't even know if the third game was out by that point actually. Um, but like, I really dug it. Like, I, I, I always like uh, puzzle adventure games, and Alone Dark was basically one of those, but with combat and like being a fan of action games already at that age, like, that was something I was into. And of course, I've always been a fan of horror, and the game was creepy. So, yeah, I really liked that Lone Dark. I even liked the Lone Dark too. I, as an adult, I don't, because the game is terrible. Uh, has some really bad puzzle design. But, um... The first one, I still dig. Like, when I replayed it for the channel a couple of weeks ago, like, that was really fun. And then they rebooted it with um, the new Nightmare in 2001, and I didn't like that. I didn't like it. I know. I think I spoke about it a few episodes ago, but like, basically it tried to be more Resident Evil, because, uh, you know, Resident Evil took what Lone Dark did and in many ways improved upon it, and in some ways made it worse, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, of course, basically created, or rather firmly established the genre that Lone Dark had first created. And, um, that's fine and all, but I didn't care much for it. I'm stuck. Oh, uh, sorry. Oh, that wooden plank is too much to walk over. Um, then, of course, the fifth game, which was originally going to be called Near Death Investigation, which is the best bad subtitle ever. I wish I would have kept that title. Um, which was eventually titled Long and Dark Inferno, which... It's a fitting name considering it. It's about it's about hell and stuff. So fine, and like the game, the gameplay mechanic is about fire. Like it uses fire. Like this game uses light, where enemies can only be killed if they're set aflame. Or rather, the standard enemies can only be killed if they're set aflame. But unlike this game, actually, like manage that with like without having to run back and forth between the same locations, because um, there are multiple ways to set aflame. Um, I like the game as well. I like that it brought back the original story, um, the original Edward Carnby, um, told the story why Edward Carnby from the 1920s was in the 2010s, or rather the 2000s. Um, it wasn't a perfect story, it was very unfinished, but you know, I, I dug it, and I felt like, you know, the developers, as um, as sloppy as the game was at times, I felt they, they got what the Lunar Dark was about, they got the characters, they got what made the game, original game fun, and like they wanted to actually build off that and create something interesting. Here I'm not feeling anything. Like I don't feel any sense of design. I don't feel like anyone who worked on this, and I don't mean to, I don't like to insult devs directly because obviously a lot of things come down to Atari, the publisher, fucking people over as well, because I mean, it's modern day Atari, or rather it's Infogrames wearing an Atari jacket and pretending to be there, but the Infogrames was always Alone Dark anyway, so uh, but like it doesn't feel like anyone cared about this game because like how can how can a game like this release if if if, as, if if like a noticeable margin of developers working on it cared unless there was some massive exodus of developer uh, like employees and stuff m during development or like some big crisis happened Sonic 2006 style where like suddenly nothing was able to work and it was moving against a deadline then how can it happen like we know there wasn't a deadline issue because you fucking pushed the game ahead f three quarters of a year how did this happen how did a game like this release Let's be let's be damn clear. This is what what I have thankfully not found like any game breaking bugs so far in terms of like falling through the floor or like uh, flying away to death or anything like that. That would happen in like the the last Lone Dark games. Like it would happen a long a lot of times in that game. This game is still like way worse out of from from, from a design design standpoint. If it was just like bad out of you know oh no it's it's unfinished. Which is the big problem with the last one? Then I would be able to forgive so much of it because an unfinished game with good ideas, I am willing to suffer through the um, unfinished nature of it if I enjoy the good ideas in them. But I don't see anything good in this. 
I can still gonna, I'm still going to suffer through it because I'm determined now. Um, I want to know just how much worse this can get, and I feel I should as well because I am a Lone and Lone in the Dark fan. I'm one of the few people who actually have played through the entire series. Most people don't give a fuck about Lone in the Dark anymore, and you know, for good reason. It's barely been a, barely been a name in gaming for the last decade, but. Damn it, I, I want it to be something, and I feel like Atari has basically killed it here, and I want to know just how bad it gets. If it gets worse, or if it if this is how it remains. Okay. Let's see how badly this explosion kills a frame rate. This is meant to be a standoff or something while we're with enemies, but there are no enemies, so... I guess we should get a bit closer so we can see it, because otherwise the draw distance might actually improve our frame rate for a bit. There was no sound from the explosion. Like, I for a second I thought we were meant to be like it was meant to be deafening, but we can hear our footsteps here, it's fine. Oh my god, an enemy! I actually kinda miss you. Hello enemy. You're inside the wall. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, now we can see you. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Should I shoot you out of the wall? Maybe you can fall down to me. I can't hit him. Oh, here he is, here he is. Hello. You too? If I stand here, hello. Yes, here we go. Here we go. Come on, come on, pal. How close can we get? Oh, I think we killed him. That's amazing. Part of me actually wants to see if I can merge into that rock as well, but I don't know if I should. I say as I walk up towards it. Oh my god. Oh, so he was just trying to get to me through this... Through this... Wow. That's what happened. It was just actual pathfinding not working. Doom level pathfinding is better than that. In fact, there's... There's a code that John Carmack wrote for a game called uh, Catacombs 3D. I think it was Catacombs 3D, at least. Um, where he designed it so enemies, if they couldn't approach you, if they, if they were making no progress towards the player uh, after a certain time, a very short amount of time, it would start moving to the sides to walk around things. That same code still exists in Rage. The same line of code still exists in Rage. Uh, Karmic has validated this. Um, confirmed, like, yeah, it's it's the same code. It's still, it's, it, it, was, it was in this game and it's, it's in that last game. And this game didn't get it right. We leveled up. Thank fuck. Uh, did we spend 10 minutes in this episode? I think we spent 10 minutes in this episode. Let's, let's spend some skill points. We have one skill point to spend. Um, oh, so these cost two skill points. Of course they do. Um... We could increase reload speed, ability regen, ability cost. No, it's not too bad. Loadout panel. Oh, what's this? We actually have some other stuff. Tesla coil. Electrocutes nearby enemies. Spinner. Throws a pyrotechnic disc used again to cause an explosion. That actually sounds cool. Can we use that? We can. Okay. We have that for the next episode then. That's cool. Class skills. Oh, these are new. Oh, increased shotgun ammo. Um, well, let's let's upgrade our spinner then, I guess. All right, engineer. We finished perilous descent. This was one of the worst levels I've played in, in any modern game ever made. Holy fuck! This makes 007 Legends look legendary. See you next episode.